Now that we already know how to use the basic differentiation rules, let's move on to some intermediate techniques. Why do we need to? Well, most of the functions that we are going to run into later in this course will be much more difficult and too complex for the basic rules to handle. The first intermediate diff technique that we are going to learn today is called chain rule. Talking about the word chain, it refers to series of events that occur in order or consecutively. For example, the chain reaction in nuclear fission, where a uranium atom gets broken down by a neutron, creating more neutrons to break down more uranium atoms, which keeps going until you stop it. Or if you play fighting games, a chain combo, which are the attacks executed in series, one after another. So chain rule for differentiation will be similar in the way that we are going to diff in series. In order. One after another. The question is, when do we need to use it? Here is the key. When we have a composite of several functions, the key is right here. Composite of several functions. In other words, when we have a function within a function, that's when you need chain rule. So, composite of functions will be the key. Now, let's take a look at these three functions we have at the top. Let's start with this one right here, number one. We have function f of x equal to sine of x. And for number two, we have function g of x. g of x is different from f of x, and g of x is equal to x squared minus 4. Now, for number three we have another different function, and it's called h of x. h of x equal to ln of x. And now we try to find the derivatives of these functions. Let's start with number one. We want to find derivative of f, f prime of x with respect to x. And it's going to be equal to y prime, same meaning. Now we have to diff sine of x. And at this point, we know it's going to be equal to cosine of x. Easy stuff, right? Trigonometry rule. So let's move on to number two. We want to find derivative of g. So it's going to be g prime of x and same meaning as y prime. And now we have to diff x squared minus 4. This one is easy to do. We just need to apply the power rule. So we diff x squared. 2 is going to come down, and the power of x decreases by 1. So it becomes x to the power of 1, or x alone here. And now we have to diff minus 4, which is a constant. So we have to apply the constant rule. And at this point, we know that if we differentiate a constant alone, it's going to go to 0. So we have plus 0 here, which doesn't really matter. So I'm going to take it out. So g prime of x equal to 2x. Now, for number 3, we want to find derivative of h. h prime of x. And once again, same meaning as y prime. And now, we have to diff ln of x. And for this one, we know it's going to be equal to 1 over x. Diff ln of something, you get 1 over that thing. If you forgot about this, that's okay. You can look at the formula sheet, the basic differentiation rules. You can do that too. Now, let's move on to number 4. Number 4 down here is going to be a little bit different from 1, 2, and 3. Let's start by looking at the function that we have for number 4. We have sine of something inside, some terms, x squared minus 4. Looking at this, I think it's similar to 1 and 2. It's similar to 1 in the way that it has sine, right? It has sine, same thing. And it's similar to number 2, or g of x, in terms of x squared minus 4. So number 4 is like similar to f of x and g of x, but not exactly the same. It's like the combination of f and g. 
So um, let, let's find out what's going on here in number four. What about we look at number four this way? What about I group everything that is, that is inside signed together in a box? So let's put them together in a box. This one right here. So when we have it this way, we can see that y right here is equal to sine of this box, sine of something, and that is the essence of function f of x. So let's take a look at this function f of x up here again. The essence of this. So we have this function f. And for this case, we pass x through f. And in the end, we have this sine of x. So we pass something in. We get sine of that thing out. So the essence is sine, this function. And it shows up here. So I'm going to make a note up here that I see, I see the essence of function f. So this is definitely f. What about we try to put everything in terms of flowchart? So we see what's going on. So I see f. So what about I put a box right here? I see f definitely in this number four. But it turns out that the input for this f is not just x, it's this red box. So this red box is the input for this case, number four. So for this one, we have this red box right here, x squared minus four as the input for this function f. What we get from this is the sign of the input. So we have sign of this red box. Okay, same values inside x squared minus 4. So this is what happens at the end. But let's take a look at the input. It turns out that the red box itself right here, these terms, x squared minus 4, are exactly the same as what we have right here, x squared minus 4. And it's equal to g of x, which means that the red box itself is g of x. So this is g of x. So down here is, well, we have g of x right here. So g of x is the input for this function f. And that's why we end up with this sign of this red box. But keep in mind that in order to, to have g of x, we have, to, um, we have another function. We have to pass x through g in order to get g of x because g of x is the image or the product of x. Okay, so let's see what happened before this red box. Before this red box, we have another function going on. This one right here, and it's g. What about I save some space? All right, somewhere around here, so we have g and we pass x through it. Okay, we pass x through g, and it becomes its product, its image, and we have g of x over here. So this is what's going on, everything that is going on in number four, and we look at this in terms of flow. Make a note that we look at this in terms of flow. Starting with x becomes g of x, and then it becomes well, f of g of x. So let's put everything in terms of notation. Let's start with the last function. This one is the last function. So I'm going to write down, write it down down here. Let me move this up here. g of x. So let's put everything in terms of notation. I'm going to start with the last function I see, sine, which is f. Okay. And it turns out that the input for this f is g of x. So the input for this f is going to be g of x. And we can express these terms in terms of composite of two functions, equal to f o g of x. So what we see over here is a composite. And as you know, when we have composite of functions, we are going to have to apply chain rules if we want to find the derivative of this. So we want to find this. We want to find derivative f of g of x. Okay, and we want to diff this. What about in red color? We want to diff this in terms of 
uh, with respect to s. So we can express this in terms of this notation f o g f o g prime of x. Same meaning. Before we try to differentiate this, I want you to look at this function differently, and this is the way I see it. In instead of looking at this as a flow that we just saw, let's try to take a look at this in terms of layers. So we have another way to look at this function in terms of layers. So let's take a look here. I'm going to put the outside layer up here, the biggest box, and this represents the most outside function or the last function and that is sine of it's going to be sine of something okay and in this case we have this red box and inside this biggest box we have the inside box which is the red box okay and for this one we have this okay we have this x square minus 4. So here we have two layers. Okay, We can make a note that we have two layers. And the outside one is function f. And the inside one is function g. So you can look at this as a flow or as a layers. That's up to you. Whichever you find more um, easier to understand. Okay, now we try to find derivative of this f of g. And yes, we have the formula for that. It's from the book and it's on the right side over here. This is the formula for chain rule. And the formula is right here. We want to find derivative of f of g. We want to find this. And it's going to be equal to these terms. So you can apply this. But I don't like to use the formula right away from the book without really understanding its concept. So what about we try to understand it first so that we can apply it easily without getting confused. So when it comes to chain rule, I want to keep it simple. We just need to follow one guideline and the guideline is down here. So let's take a look here. One guideline for you for chain rule. First of all, Number one, very important, you need to know the order of the functions you have. All right, number one, you need to know the function order. If you look at the flow, you need to know which one is the last, which one is the first. All right, this one is the first and f is the last. If you look at this function in terms of layers, you need to know which one is the most outside and which one is inside. All right. But I like to look at this in terms of layers, so I'm going to continue with the, uh, with the outside and inside. Now let's take a look at number two. Once we know the order, we are going to diff each one of them one by one. But we are going to start with the one on the outside. Start to diff from outside and proceed to inside. Start with most outside. Okay, which means that we are going to diff f first, the last one. We are going to diff f or the uh, down here, the, the most outside layers, which is f. Now, what do we need to keep in mind while we are doing that? Let's take a look at number, number three. Number three down here, while we are differentiating any function, we are going to leave the inside alone. Okay, so if you differentiate the most outside, you are going to leave the inside alone. You do not touch it. All right. Now, after you are done with that, you are going to proceed with this kind of logic. And then once you get everything, you are going to multiply them together. OK, so that is all. That is the guideline you need for the chain rule. You don't need to memorize any formula. Now, let's try to apply this guideline to the to the formula that we have up here, what's going to happen? So we try to find out about this f o g prime. What is it equal to? Now, let's forget about this formula. I can use this, but I don't want to use it uh, for now. Let's use the guideline. OK, so first of all, we need to know the function order. 
At this point, we know that F is outside. F is outside and G is inside. So I'm going to diff F first because F is outside. So I'm going to diff F first, right, F prime. And then I leave the inside alone. I'm going to leave the inside alone. So inside F, we have this G of X. I leave it alone. That's it. And now I proceed to the next inside function, which is G. Move on to the next one, and I diff it. So I diff it, I get G prime of X. Okay, that is the next one. Once I get everything, then I multiply them together. So that's all. And you can compare them. It's going to be F prime of G of X times G prime of X. Same thing as what you have over here. Well, that's how I see it. Now let's try to find the value of this in terms of sine of x squared minus 4. So I need some more space. So this is going to be equal to. First of all, I need to diff f. Let's take a look here. We need to diff f. And when it comes to differentiating f, let's take a look up here. You diff f, you get cosine. Right, so we are going to bring this down here. You diff f, you get cosine. And now we leave the inside alone. The inside is g of x. So we put everything in. x squared. Inside, we leave it alone. x squared minus 4. There you go. We got the first term right here. f prime with the inside le left alone. Now we try to find the next term, g prime of x. This one is easy. We already got it over here, 2x. So 2x right here, and we multiply them together. That's it. And that is the result for the derivative of number 4. Okay. All right, now let's take a look at number 5. Number 5 is going to be a little bit more complicated than number 4. Now let's take a look here. Let's start by looking at the function itself. Number five, so we have sine, all right? So we have the essence of function f, definitely. And now we also have, okay, I think I'm going to put a box around this, this whole term right here, sine of this whole box. But then the inside is not, it's not exactly the same as number two or number three, but I have something another box square minus 4 and when it comes to something square minus 4 it's the essence of number 2 right so we have the essence of g of x right here so we have g right here for the red box but then inside this red box we have another box which is ln of x and talking about ln of x that is the essence of number 3 number three right here. So what we have here inside is edge of x. Okay, so many things are going on here. Now, I don't want to use the flow anymore, so I'm going to use layers. So looking at this function number five, I see sine as the most outside function. I see this first, most outside function. So I'm going to have this big box right here. Okay, and this box will represent sine function. This is sine of something. Okay, and it's going to be a lot of terms inside. And this represents function f. And now we have to talk about what's inside the sign. This red box. Inside this red box, I see this something square minus 4. Right here, something square minus 4. So I have this blue box, square, okay, square minus 4. And that is the essence of function g, right here. And now, since we have another box, I'm going to put it inside. And that is the blue box right here. And that blue box is equal to ln x. Definitely, this is edge of x. So, with this, I know the order. 
F is the most outside, followed by G, and then HX is inside. So if we want to put everything in terms of notation, we are going to have this. So let me put this right here. So number five, it's going to be equal to F is the most outside function, followed by G. And then inside G, we have H of X. Okay. H of X inside as the input for G, and then we have G of H of X to be the input of F. So this is what's going on here for this number five. So if you want to express this in terms of composite, it's going to be this F O G O H. And in terms of X. All right. Now we want to find the derivative of this. We want to, okay, so we want to find f of g of h, everything down here, and we want to diff this. Diff this with respect to x. So it's going to correspond to f o g o h prime of x. Now we have, well, we have more more steps to consider. And as you can see here, with these kind of terms, we don't have the formula for that. Because the formula we have up here is just for two functions. But now we have three functions. A function inside a function inside a function. So now we can't rely on the, the formula anymore. So we are going to apply the guideline that I have over here on the right hand side. So first of all, we need to determine the function order. And we have it right here. F is the most outside, followed by G and by HX, the last. Now, we are going to diff from outside to inside. So let's proceed to do that. The most outside function here is F, so let's differentiate that. Let's diff F. And we are going to get this F prime down here. And now we have to leave whatever inside this F prime to be the same as what we have for F. So what's inside here is going to be the same as what we have over here, these terms. And I just noticed that I missed one parenthesis, so let's add one right here. So these terms have to show up down here again for f prime. So we have g of h of x down here, exactly the same as what we had before, these terms. Now we move on to the next inside function, which is g. This one, g, next one, we are going to diff that. We diff g, we get g prime. So next one, we have g prime. And whatever inside this g prime has to be the same as what we had for the g. So we are going to have some terms over here, and it had to be the same as what we have over here inside g. All right, we have h of x over here. So let's add it right here, exactly the same. So same as what we had before. Now we proceed to the next function, which is h, the last one. So next one in line is h, and we diff that. We get h prime. So last term, h prime. OK, so h prime of x. Now that we have all the terms, we need to multiply them together. So first term multiplies the second term, and then the last term. And there you go. That is the formula for the derivative of f o g o h. Now let's use this to find derivative of example number five. Okay, it's going to be equal to first term down here. It's f prime. We need this. f prime. We can find it over here. We diff f. We get f prime. f is sine. So f prime is cosine of x. This is f prime. So let's bring cosine down here. Cosine, and then we leave what's inside alone, exactly the same as what we had before. It had to be, it has to be these terms, g of h of x. So it's going to be the red box that we have over here. So let's bring the red box right here too. It's going to be ln 
of x squared minus 4. Once again, this is the red box. And this is equal to g of h of x. Okay, that is the first term. Now, second term, that is g prime. So, we need to find out what g prime is. g is right here. g is something to the power of 2. And g prime is going to be 2 constant 2 at the front times that term. So, we are going to get that 2 at the front. So, let's bring that down here. Okay, so, one more parenthesis. And it's going to, to time... 2 at the front from g prime and then we keep what's inside g prime alone it's going to be h of x for this one is easy we have it over here h of x equal to ln x so 2 right here times ln x inside okay so what we have over here inside is h of x alone and now last term h prime of x we need this this one is easy to because we have it over here 1 over x so let's use that times last term 1 over x and that is the derivative of example number 5 we use the uh, the formula that we derived ourselves to solve this and I think that's all we need to know about chain rules as long as you understand this guideline you can solve any composite of functions quite easily well, let's try that on the examples in the next slide. So we have three examples right here. So let's start with the first one at the top left. So let's take a look at this one. And we have this function right here. So this is function that we have. The function is 5x cubed minus x. And then everything goes to the power of 6. So what you see right here is not a simple function. What I see right here is a composite of several functions. That's from my observation. So let's write that down. What I see right here is a composite. It looks complicated. Composite of functions. Many of them. So what do we need to do? We need to apply chain rule. You see composite of functions, you apply chain rule. And when it comes to chain rules, you have to apply the guideline that I gave to you. And the first step is to determine the function order. We need to know the order. So, next step. Very important. Determine function Okay, what about I put it over here? So, you want to apply chain rules? First thing first. Determine function order. That is the start. Okay, so let's do that over here. Function order. And I'm going to find out about this by using the layers that I am used to. And I think of this as, as a map so that I don't get lost. So, function order, we need to determine which function is outside, which function is inside. So, let's take a look here. We have this y equal to 5x cubed minus x to the power of 6. What about I put a bracket around these terms? 5x cubed minus x and then all these terms to the power of 6 and there you go we see the most outside function to be the power of 6 so I'm going to use the um, the layers down here the most outside one I see this some terms something to the power of 6 that is the most outside function I see and then inside that terms we have 5x cubed minus x. So I'm going to include that inside the layers. That's going to be the next layer. Inside, we have this 5x cubed minus x. It's in this, this term right here, this box, or <laughs> you can call it 
well, a parenthesis. Inside this parenthesis. So we have this x cubed and 5 at the front minus x. So there you go. We have all the layers that we need. We include everything here. And now we need to apply the chain rules. So we have the function order. Next thing we are going to do is to differentiate starting from the outside and we proceed to the inside. So let's do that. We are going to differentiate the most outside function first. So we are going to diff this power of 6 first. And then we differentiate these polynomials 5x cubed minus x. So diff each one of them separately. You diff the power of 6. This is power rule. So 6 is going to come down and you keep whatever is inside alone like this and then the power decreases by 1 so we have power of 5 right here. So the question is what is inside here? Inside here we need to, uh, we need to keep it the same over here too and we know that inside is this 5x cubed minus x so let's put that in. 5 x cubed minus x is inside the first layer. Now we differentiate the next layer which is 5x cubed minus x. This one is easy. So power rule again. So 3 comes down becomes 15 and the power of x decreases by 1. It becomes square. You diff minus x you get minus 1. Okay now Let's take a look here. The layers that we have, we have two layers of function. Number one and number two. Number one is outside, number, number two is inside. So let's make a note here that we have uh, two layers of functions here. Two layers of functions. Okay, now that we differentiate each one of them Successfully, we are going to multiply them together as the last step. So we have the first term right here, number 1, from the outside layer, number 1 and number 2. The next thing we are going to do is to multiply. So that we get this y prime. So y prime equal to 1 times 2. Let's multiply them together. So the first term is 6 5x cubed minus x to the power of 5 times the second term which is 15x squared minus 1. And there you go. That is the y prime for the first example using chain rule. And here we have two layers of functions. Okay, now let's try to um, do the same for the example number two over here. So um, what about I fix this? So this is 15x squared. 15x squared minus 1. So that I can put a line over here. Now let's try to uh, solve this number 2 right here. So we have this function. Let's take a look at this. Function of x equal to sine of x cubed plus x and to the power of 3. Now we need to determine the function order again because this is definitely a composite of functions right here. So determine this function order once again we need to determine which one is the most outside. So by observation I see this sign right here and I also see this power of 3. So which one is the most outside? Is it sine or is it cube? Which one of them? I am pretty sure that if I ask you this question in the, in the classroom I would get different opinions. Some of you would say sine and some of you would say cube. Now let's try to take a look at this function like this on this right hand side. So sine of 
x cube, when you see something like this, this is equal to sine of x and everything goes to the power of 3. It's the same. These two terms are equal. So when you see sine x cube in the original form like this, you might not know which one is outside, which one is inside. But when you see it like this, you know right away that we have a bracket right here. And the most outside function is the power of 3. Okay, so power of 3 and then we have sine x inside. So here we know right away that the most outside function is cube. So once again, we need function order before we start using the chain rule. Function order. And I'm going to use the <laughs> layers again. Okay, this should be good enough. So the most outside function is going to be this power of 3. So it's going to be some terms, something to the power of 3. And now what's inside this is sine, the next one. The next function in line is sine inside this power of 3. So next one right here. I have sine. But then I do not stop here because inside sine I have more terms. Look at these. So this is going to be sine of some terms. So I'm going to leave it as parenthesis, as a blank space. Now inside sine we have some terms over here and it's polynomial x cubed plus x. So last one right here. Inside sine, we have x cubed plus x. And there you go. We include all the terms here. So we have first layer outside. That is power of 3. Okay, this one first layer. Second layer, sine. Third layer, polynomial. And let's make a note down here that this is three layers of functions. So even though we have three layers, even though we have f, o, g, o, h, it doesn't really matter in the end. The guideline is the same. We are going to differentiate each layer separately, one by one, and then we multiply them together at the end. Okay, so let's do just, uh, just like what we did before. Differentiate the first layer second layer and last layer diff diff and diff <clears throat> first we differentiate power of 3 so this is power rule so 3 comes down and we keep what's inside here alone the same all right and the power decreases by 1 so we have 2 right here so we need to ask ourselves what is inside here so we need to keep it the same, and it's going to be sine of x cubed plus x. So let's complete this. This is going to be sine of x cubed plus x. All right. Now, next one, we need to diff sine. This one, easy. Cosine. But we need to leave the inside alone. What is inside sine? We have this x cubed plus x. So let's bring this over here too. It's going to be x cubed plus x. Now, last term, polynomials. This one is the easiest. So we diff x cubed, we get 3x squared. 3x squared. We diff x, we get 1. All right, got all the terms. And what we need to do here is to multiply them all. Okay, I think I need some space. What about I put this over here? This is three layers of functions. Okay, this is number one up here, number two, and number three. And we want to find the derivative of this y, y prime. So y prime 
it is going to be equal to the <clears throat> product of each term of all these terms that we have 1 times 2 times 3 so let's bring them all together here first term 3 sine of x cubed plus x and everything square so 3 of sine of x cubed plus x and everything square that is the first term next term cosine multiply cosine of x cubed plus x now next term last one 3x squared plus 1 3x squared plus 1 as the last term and there you go that is y prime for a uh, second example All right, now let's move on to the third example down here. So let's take a look at this. Number three, what do we have here? We have 10 of some terms. So this is definitely a composite of several functions. So we have some terms over here. But this one seems to be obvious that 10 is the most outside function. So let's build that, build the function order map, the layers function orders okay the most outside function that I see here from observation is definitely 10 okay so I have this one right here most outside function outside layer so we have 10 of some terms and now inside this 10 we have this these terms 5 minus sine of 2t square so what do we see over here um, is it sine or is it square that's going to be the next function is it going to be this sine right here or is it going to be this square right here oh by the way this is equal to function of t t is the input for this function once again, let's write this down. Sine of t squared equal to sine of t and everything squared, which means that square right here is the most outside. And then inside this square, we have sine t. So comparing these two, square right here is going to be the next function in line. So next one, next layer. is going to be 5 minus something square 5 minus some terms square okay now what's inside this term we see sine of 2t sine of 2t right here so sine of 2t is gonna go next so next function in line is going to be sine okay let's add one more layer here next one in line is going to be sine and we do we do not stop here because we have some more terms inside sine so sine of some terms inside and inside sine we have 2t last terms okay last layer right here it's going to be 2t so we have all these layers so let's count them one two three and four so let's make a note down here layers four layers of functions but it doesn't matter we have four of them we apply the same guideline same technique we differentiate each layer separately and then we multiply them together all right so once again it's going to be the same diff diff and diff so first of all let's diff 10 let's use the trigonometry property you diff 10 you get secant square so it's going to be secant square over here and we leave whatever inside this alone so what's inside here is going to be the same as these these terms same as over here and these terms are going to be these terms over here, up here. 5 minus sine 2t squared. 
So let's complete that. 5 minus sine of 2t squared. Okay, now let's differentiate the next layer. So we differentiate this. This constant right here is going to go away, right? So this one doesn't really matter. Now we differentiate the next term minus some terms squared. So this is power rule. So 2 is going to come down. We keep the minus sign. 2 comes down and this term's still there with the power decreased by 1. So we have power of 1 here, which doesn't really matter, so I take it out. Now we find out what, what is this, uh, what's inside this parenthesis here. We need to bring it over here too. So inside this square we have sine of 2t. So let's bring that over here, sine of 2t inside the square. You can take a look up here. Sine of 2t is inside the square. Now let's move on to the next layer. We diff sine. This one we have seen many times. It's going to be cosine. And once again we keep the inside alone. So what is inside sine? This time it's going to be 2t. Last layer. So let's bring whatever is inside here to here. So this is going to be 2t. And now we diff the last term, 2t. Diff that with respect to t. And we are going to get just constant 2. Okay, let's make a note here that we here we diff with respect to t this time. Okay, now all we need to do is to multiply them all together. So this one right here. Multiply again. Because what we need in the end is this y prime. We need this y prime and it's going to be equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. So let's bring the first term right here. Secant square of 5 minus sine 2t square. Second term times minus 2 of sine 2t. Okay, so next, uh, next one. Next term is going to be cosine of 2t. And last term, just 2. And that is the y prime for example number 3. And in this case we have four layers of functions. And it's not that much more difficult as long as we understand the guideline. Okay, so um, let's make a note. This one is uh, first one, number two, and three, and last one, four. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide. We have more examples. Okay, so let me erase this. These examples are going to be more challenging than the previous ones. So let's take a look at number four right here. First, let's take a look at the function that we have. So this is our function, f of x. And we have quite a lot of terms here. Looking at this, I think I see two groups of terms. So the first group is this, 4x plus 3, to the power of 4. And then it multiplies with the second group, which is x plus 1, to the power of minus 3. So from the look of this, this function is definitely not simple. It has to be a composite of several sub-functions. This means that we have to apply the chain rule again. So chain rule comes into play again. And we need to apply our guideline. And as you know, we need to start with the function order. So we need function order. To start, we need to know which function is the most outside one, which one is the next in line, so that we can proceed to include all of them. So here, let's take a look at this number four. 
we need to determine that too. We need to determine which function is the most outside function for this fx. So let's take a look at this one right here. Which is the most outside sub-function you see in this function? Most outside? At this point, I think many of you might have noticed something different. Here we have this power, power of 4 at the front, and we also have power of minus 3 at the back. It looks to be similar, but which one is the most outside? If I ask you this question in the class, I would get different opinions. Some of you would say that it has to be the power of 4 because it comes first, so it has to be the most outside. Some of you would say that it can be either one because this is multiplication. You can use either one of them to be the most outside function. But it turns out that the answer to this is that both of them are the most outside function for its own group. So both of them are the most outside. So let's take a look here. All right, so we are going to separate them into two groups. First, box for this one. And second box for this one. And we have multiplication between them. Now, how are we going to build the function layers that we used to? How are we going to have the most outside box, the biggest one, and with the several boxes inside? Here we have two boxes instead. So how is it going to happen? So let's take a look here. So since we have two boxes multiplied together, we are going to name each one of them different. So first one, we are going to name u of x. And the second one, v of x. And we have a product between them. Since we have a product of two terms that depend on x, we have to apply the product rule first. So you see this, you know right away, it has to be product rule. Product rule, which means that we are going to uh, need to apply this u dv plus v du in order to find the derivative of this y. Oh, by the way, we want to find this. We want to find y prime equal to what? Now, we need the product rule, and we also need the chain rules. So we need to take a look at each box separately. So let's take a look at the first one right here. So I'm going to build this one, this first box, right here. This is for u of x. So this is for u of x, and it multiplies with the second box. This one, this is for v of x. Okay, this one, v of x, and now we have to find out about each box. So let's start with u of x. Let's see if we have layers inside it. So let's take a look at u of x right here. I see this bracket Okay, around this, these terms. And then we have the power of 4. So the most outside function for this box, this u of x, it's going to be some terms to the power of 4. So I'm going to put it right here. Some terms to the power of 4. Okay. Do we have anything inside this power of 4? Yes, we have this 4x plus 3. So this is going to be the next uh, layer. So this one right here next layer. It's going to be 4x plus 3. Simple polynomials. That is for the first box. Now for the second box, let's take a look here. Here I have this bracket over the, these two terms. So this bracket to the power of minus 3. That is the most outside function for the second box. Bracket to the power of minus 3. And then, okay, let me fix that. Minus 3. And do we have anything inside this? Of course, we have x plus 1, polynomials. So here we have x plus 1. So two boxes, and inside each box, we have 
several subboxes. And now we have to find this. We have to find UDV plus VDU. So we want to find this Y prime. It's going to be equal to UDV plus VDU. This is product rule. So let's start with the first term. U right here. This one is easy. So U right here. This one, we can use it right away. This is equal to 4x plus 3 to the power of 4. First term, easy. 4x plus 3 to the power of 4. That is u. Now, we need this dv. Where do we find it? We are going to use the boxes that we just built. We have v over here. We need to find v prime. So we are going to apply chain rule to the second boxes. Okay, so we need to, once again, diff this, the most outside function, most outside layer. And then we diff this with respect to x. And then we are going to multiply them together. So let's apply that. So we diff this some terms to the power of minus 3. This is power rule. So minus 3 is going to come down. So we have minus 3. And we have some terms inside. We are going to keep it the same as before. So do we have anything inside this? It's going to be the same as that. And we know that is equal to x plus 1. So x plus 1 over here. Now we diff the next term, the next layer. We diff x plus 1 and we know that we get 1 over here. And now we are going to multiply them together. So let's make a note here that dv right here is going to be equal to the product between the two terms that we just uh, calculated. Minus 3 x plus 1 times 1. So I'm going to bring them over here. Times minus 3 times x plus 1. This 1 right here doesn't really matter, so I'm not going to include it. So there you go, we have dv over here. Now, next term, v, this one easy, plus v equal to x plus 1 to the power of minus 3. Now, we have to find du, and we can use chain rule on the first box to find that. So, let's diff this layer by layer. So the first one is going to be power rule. So 4 comes down. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. This power comes down. I have to decrease the power by 1. So this has to have minus 4 right here. Decreases by 1. Okay? So which means that I'm supposed to have minus 4 right here. Minus 4 power. Okay, almost made a mistake. All right, let's start over again, over here. So power comes down, becomes 4 right here. And then we have this original terms. And the power decreases by 1. So we have power of 3 over here, decreased by 1. And whatever we have in here, it has to show up here. And we know it's going to be 4x plus 3. 4x plus 3. Okay, that is the first layer. Now we diff the next layer. We diff this, 4x plus 3, we get 4. Combining these two, du is going to be equal to the product between these two. It's going to be 16. All right, 16 times 4x plus 3 to the power of 3. Now that is du, so I'm going to put that over here on the uh, down here. So it's going to be 16 times 4x plus 3 to the power of 3. And that is y prime for this example number 4. Okay, now let's move on to example number 5. Okay, let's take a look here. So we have this function right here. Once again, we are going to name it f of x, let me make a boundary right here. Okay, this is f of x, and we want to find y prime. 
f of x and we want to find y prime equal to what? Now let's take a look at the function that we have here x times 10 of x oh sorry 10 of some terms 2 square root of x plus 7 okay several things going on here once again this is a composite of several functions we need chain rule we need function order so the question is which one is the most outside function for this example that we have so we have this first box at the front and the second box at the back all right and we have multiplication between them so once again Okay, y prime equal to what? We are going to name each box differently. So first box, u of x times second box, v of x. Do we need to care about this 7? Well, we want to find y prime, right? We need to diff this 7. You diff a constant, it's going to go to 0 anyway, so we don't really need to worry about this. It's going to go to 0 after y prime. So we, ne we need to care about u times v over here. Once again, we see a product between two terms that depend on x. Of course, we need product rule. And it's going to be this formula again, u dv plus v du. Now let's take a look at each term that we have here, each of the boxes. So the first one should be simple. This is just x. There is nothing here. So x alone right here. And then it multiplies with the second box. So for this one, we need to find the most outside function for this box. And as you can see here, the most outside seems to be this 10 right here. So it's going to be 10 of some terms. Most outside function. Now let's take a look at the inside of this 10. We see 2 square root of x. 2 square root of x, so that is inside this 10. Okay, we have 2 square root of x. Okay, now we want to find y prime. And it's going to be equal to y prime, once again equal to product rule. u dv plus v du. So, starting with this one, u. This one is easy. Oh, by the way, this is u of x, and this is v of x. So first one right here, u easy, equal to x. Now we need dv, so we need to work on the second box. So we want to apply chain rule to this one. Diff this, diff this, and multiply them together. So you diff 10, you are going to get secant square. So this one is going to be secant square. And we have something inside here, and it has to be the same as what we had before over here. And we know it's 2 square root of x. 2 square root of x. And now we need to differentiate 2 square root of x. So we are going to differentiate 2 times x to the power of 1 over 2. So we diff this diff this with respect to x so it's power rule again so 1 over 2 comes down cancel with 2 so we have 1 at the front and then the power decreases by 1 so x to, to the power of minus 1 over 2 so here we have 1 over square root of x and we multiply them together so we have this dv sorry for the space equal to the product between these two so it's going to be secant square 2 square root of x times 1 over square root of x. That is dv. So let's bring that down here. So this is equal to secant square of 2 square root of x times 1 over square root of x plus v. This one, of course, easy. We have it over here this v, this red box, second one. So it's going to be 10 of 2 square root of x, that is v. Now we need du, so all we need to do is to diff this, 
x right here. We diff it, we know that it's going to be 1. So for this, du equal to 1. So we can add it over here, which doesn't really matter. I can take it away. And that is y prime for the example number 5. Once again, we use the product rule to solve this. Okay, this is for number 5. Now let's move on to the last example, number 6. What do we have here? Here we have a function of theta. So the input right here is theta. You can change it to x, to t, whatever you want, but here it's theta. So let's use theta. So what do we have here? We have a fraction and then we have a square. So which one is the most outside? This one is easy. Let's put a bracket behind, uh, around this. Everything around here, inside here, is going to, is going to get square. So from this, we know right away the most outside function is square. So let's build that. Most outside function. Some terms, square. So what is inside this fraction? I'm going to put everything here. I don't need to split it anymore. So it's going to be this sine of theta divide by 1 plus cosine theta. So that is the map that we have here, function order. So we want to find, we want to find this f prime of theta equal to what? So of course we have layers here, so we need to apply chain rule. So we have the order, so what we need to do next is to differentiate each layer separately. Diff this, diff this, and we combine them at the end. So with this one, it's going to be the power rule. So 2 comes down, all right, and we keep whatever is inside the same. And the power decreases by 1, so we have 1 over here. So what is, what is inside this parenthesis is going to be over here too, and it's going to be equal to these terms. Sine theta divided by 1 plus cosine theta. So that is the first layer. Now let's move on to the next layer. We need to diff this. And as you can see here, we have a fraction, which means that we have to apply quotient rule. Definitely quotient rule. Why? Because we have a fraction. So it's going to be v du minus u dv divided by v squared. So this one, let's write down v du down diff up minus up diff down divided by down square. So what is it, e what is it equal to? So v is going to be 1 plus cosine theta. du, we need to diff, oh, what about I do this so that it's clear to you. This one right here, this one up here is u of x, and this one down here is v of x. So v, we got it to be 1 plus cosine theta. Now du, we need to diff sine theta. We have cosine theta for that. Next term, minus u. So we got this, we got this. What about u? u is sine theta. So sine theta right here. And dv, let's find out about this. dv, we need to diff this. So we diff 1, it's going to go to 0. We diff cosine theta, we have minus sine theta. So we have minus sine theta here divided by v squared. v is 1 plus cosine theta, and we have a square over here. So we can combine all these terms. It's going to be equal to plus sine theta squared. <clears throat> OK, so let me split the screen right here. So we have these two terms, and we are supposed to multiply them together. So f prime of theta is going to be the product between these two. Number one over here and number two over here. 
So it's going to be equal to 2, the first term, sine theta divided by 1 plus cosine theta, coming from this 1 right here, number 1. Now, the second term from the second layer down here. So number 2, all these terms, has to be up here too, times 1 plus cosine theta times cosine theta plus, last term, sine theta square divided by, so we have 1 plus cosine theta in the parenthesis square here. Now we are going to work on these terms. Let's check whether we can simplify them. So I'm going to multiply this cosine into the parenthesis. Cosine right here goes into this term and also this one. So let's see what happens. So this is going to be equal to the front term. 2 sine theta divided by 1 plus cosine theta times the back term here, cosine theta times 1, we have cosine theta. Now cosine theta times cosine theta, we have cosine theta square plus the last term, sine theta square divided by same term here, 1 plus cosine theta in parenthesis square. Now I am going to combine these two cosine square plus sine square. These two, it's going to be equal to 1. Sine square plus cosine square equal to 1. So this is equal to 1, so we have 1 plus cosine theta for the numerator, for the back term. Now we can cancel these two. Got lucky. This one right here, 1 plus cosine theta, with this one, 1 plus cosine theta. So in the end, we have this. 2 sine theta for numerator divided by 1 plus cosine theta in parenthesis square. And that is the final answer for example number 6 here.